Greetings, everyone. This is Rock and Roll Spot Connection with another installment of Billy the Team. So, concerning last week's uh, teams, the uh, martial arts and martial arts and warrior teams um, ended up running the mm, excuse me the assassin team twice. It did actually fairly well. Um, it did get kind of hosed against uh, one team, uh, Lucas's, Lucas from Heretical's headquarters team, uh, kind of, yeah, uh, basically kind of, you know, like the, hey, here's your ass, but there were, you know, mistakes were made, we'll just say mistakes were made. Um, then uh, ran the Avengers team, which included Shang-Chi, uh, in the last round, and <laughs> that one worked out really well, especially Shang Chi, who uh, I got to use his uh, counter tokens, um, and <laughs> quite effectively. But uh, however, he uh, or the one point of oh, that's right, I could I could prob that. Forgetting about, like, oh, I'll let it slide. Probably cost me the entire game. But, oh well, it happens. Anyway, moving on to this week's build. Um, so, <laughs> funny story. The build of the team video you'll be seeing next week was actually supposed to be the build of the video you'll be getting, that uh, you'll be getting this week. However, during... Uh, during the uh, most recent game, the mastermind behind the build for week a the week after this upcoming one had to back out for this upcoming week, so he said, hey, can we postpone my idea for a week? So, Lucas and I came up with something. So, so 400 points must, in must include at least a piece from Rise and Fall. Which, to be fair, we've all got a bunch of a bunch of new XM pieces that we're very eager to play. So let's get started, shall we? We've got three teams. First off, we have ourselves a Brotherhood team. Kicking things off, we've got the Skinless Man, this Eldritch Horror-looking motherfucker. Skinless Man comes in at thirty points, has the Brotherhood team ability as well as the Brotherhood mutants and Weapon X keywords. Uh, looking at his dial, it's very short because he is only 30 points. But we've got full round of plasticity, full round of blade slots, fangs, and full round of a special defense power. Elastic body horror, which grants toughness to super senses. When skinless man uses super senses and succeeds, after resolutions, you may give an adjacent opposing character an action token. That's neat. That's actually really neat. I, I like it. I, I really do like it. Moving on to our next figure, we've got Destiny. Destiny, we haven't seen in a very long while. In clicks. I think the last time we got a Destiny figure was back in the Days of Future Past Gravity Feed. Anyway, Destiny comes in at 30 points, or 35 points, my bad. Has the Brotherhood Mutants key, uh, team ability as well as the Brotherhood Mutants and Freedom Force keywords. She also has a rally ability. Um, as all the rally abilities in this set, it keys off opposing attack rolls. Whenever a character rolls to attack or break away, you may remember a rally die on Destiny's card to re roll the result. Okay. So Destiny is a precog. Uh, she's actually she's also kind of a big deal in uh, what's going on in the X Men comics at the moment. Even though she's been dead for decades, real, decades real time, about five years or so com comic time. Anyway, looking at Destiny's dial, we open up with a couple clicks of stealth followed by a couple clicks of sidestep on it on speed. Attack isn't really her thing, so yeah. Um, she does have six range, though. Uh, she cause, as, And to be fair, she does utilize a crossbow on occasion, so, you know. But uh, on defense, we've got a full run of uh, super senses, and on damage, we have a full run of probability control. Um, 
she's someone who would probably work out really well with a uh, with some enhancement near her or a power gem which is not for this team it's not for the mother team next up though we've got Destiny's wife Mystique this is the uncommon Mystique from uh Rise and Fall. Uh, in fact, most of this, most of the Brotherhood team is from Rise and Fall. Um, and I would actually say, actually, not too terrible. Oh, just under half of the Star Jammers team is, and the entire X Men team is. So, but Mystique comes in at forty points, has the Brotherhood and X Men team abilities as well as the Brotherhood mutants, Freedom Force, X Men, Assassin, Martial Arts, and Spy keywords. Uh, she also has a Rally ability, Super Senses. When Mystique uses it before rolling the D6, you may instead remove her rally die to use it as a result. Okay. Just have to hope that um, it was you weren't. That'll be that that'll be very useful when someone without precision strike goes after her. Now I, I will admit the downside is to the Mystique, all all three Mystiques, ten, no, two and a half Mystiques in this set is that they're in a set with where shape change is benched. Yeah, that makes sense. Anyway, looking at Mystique's style, we've got a few clicks of Stealth, followed by a couple clicks of Sidestep on Speed. A few clicks of Blaze Claws Fangs on Attack, followed by a couple clicks of Penetrating Psychic Blast. On uh, on Defense, we got a full run of Combat Reflexes. On Damage, we open up with nothing for most of the dial. The last couple clicks, we've got Close Combat Expert. Okay, makes sure... Uh, Deadly, both up close and uh, from a distance on those last couple clicks. Moving on, though, we've got Amelia Vaught. Vaught here comes in at 45 points. She has the Acolytes and Blurred of Mutants uh, keywords. Uh, we also have a trait, Mutant Messiah. At the beginning of the game, for all characters with this trait, choose a friendly character with the Acolytes or Brotherhood of Mutants key or X-Men keyword. That character can use Mastermind only to choose characters with this trait. Okay. Um, then, looking at uh, Amelia's dial, we open up with a special speed power. Slide in under the door, which gives her fetching teleport as well as Passenger 4, but only to carry characters that share a keyword with her. Then we get a couple of clicks of regular phasing. Nothing on attack for the entire dial. On defense, we open up with a special power. Transmute out of danger. Super senses. Once per turn, one of the bot or an adjacent friendly character would take three or more damage. You may give that character two action tokens to take one unavoidable damage instead. If you do, after resolutions, you may place that character in a square adjacent to her current square. Okay. Then we get a couple clicks of regeneration on de defense. On damage, we open up with some perplex, followed by a couple clicks of support. Okay. All right. Next up, we've got, also from the uh, X-Men animated set, Avalanche. Oh, damn. Avalanche here comes in at 50 points. He has the brother team ability. Excuse me. As well as the Brother of Mutants and Freedom Force keywords. Um, he also has the My Mutant Brothers and Sisters trait. Hopefully we'll stop that soon. Okay. So he has the My Mutant Brothers and Sisters trait. Which uh, reads as follows. Once per turn, when an effect other than clearing token or clearing removes an action token from Avalanche, after resolutions, heal him one click. Okay. And just so just so we're clear, the Brotherhood team ability could potentially do that. As as the Brotherhood team ability works as follows. When this character hits an opposing character with an attack roll of 10 to 12, after resolutions, remove an action token from that character. So, okay. Looking at his dial, we open up. We got a full run of sidestep on speed. On a, 
on attack, we open up the special power, Split the Earth. Quake. When Avalanche uses it, you may choose that he has Giant Reach 4, or, after resolutions, he can use Barrier at no cost. Okay. That could be very useful, especially especially the Barrier one. Then we get a couple clicks of regular Quake. On defense, we open up with a few clicks of Toughness, followed by a couple clicks of Barrier. And on damage, we have a full run of the special power. It all comes crumbling down. As a free action, destroy a piece of blocking terrain within range. Okay, his range, as you can see, is four. So. Next up, we've got Carmela Unision, who was actually someone I was incredibly excited to see in the set. Carmela here comes in at 50 points. She has the burn team ability as well as the Acolyte Splitter Her Beans and Armor Keywords. We also have a trait Bioelectric Charger against Force Blast and Force Blast and Giant Reach of 3. Okay. Looking at her dial, we open up with a few clicks of sidestep, followed by a couple clicks of charge on speed. On attack, we've got a few clicks of uh, penetrant psychic blast, followed by a couple clicks of quake. On defense, we open up with a special power. Psionic Exoskeleton, which creates energy deflection and impervious. She takes a maximum of one damage from attacks that do not deal penetrating damage. Ooh, that's nice. This then gives away a couple clicks of regular impervious. And uh, then on damage, we have a few clicks of close combat expert. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. I'm, I'm, I'm digging her. I'm, I'm digging her. I'm glad, like I said, I'm glad we got her. And, uh, yeah. She's probably to be a... <laughs> she will like... There's a good chance we'll be seeing a lot more of her brother in teams. Hell, yeah, probably a good chance we'll be seeing a lot more brother in teams. Next up, we've got... Sabertooth. Sabertooth comes in at 60 points. He has the Brotherhood Team ability as well as the Brotherhood of Mutants, Marauders, Weapon X, Animal and Monster keywords, and we have a Rally ability. Uh, when he uses Blaze Claw's Fangs before rolling the D6, you, may you can remove his Rally die to use that as a result. Looking at his dial, we've got a couple clicks of Charge on Speed, followed by a few clicks of Flurry, followed by a couple clicks of Stealth. On attack, we've got a full run of Blaze Claw's Fangs and the attack value that starts off at a 12 and drops it to its lowest at 10 in the middle and makes its way back up to 12 by the end. On defense, we got an all, we have a nice long block of toughness followed by a couple clicks of regeneration. And then on uh, damage, we have a few clicks, or more than a few clicks of exploit weakness. Okay. Not too shabby. And two of those flurry clicks overlap with the exploit weakness, so that could potentially be... Potentially, not definite, but potentially. Twelve clicks of penetrating damage up close. Oof, that's yeah, that gets painful. Anyway, finishing up the team, we've got Exodus. Exodus here comes in at ninety-five points. He has the X Men team ability, which I was actually surprised he didn't have both X Men and Brotherhood. But hey, you know, whatever. He also has the Acolytes, Brotherhood of Mutants, Marauders, Quiet Cancel, X-Men, Herald, and Past Keywords. Two traits. First off is Krakow and Revival, but as there's, a real, as there's only one other figure on the team with the X-Men keyword, I'm not really going to worry about, I'm not worried about that one. Next up, we've got Overwhelming Psionic Might, which grants Mind Control. When he uses the actual resolutions, deal a hit character damage equal to Exodus's damage value. Which, it should be noted, does not say printed damage value, or rather, damage value. So if he is, with this build, it won't, with this particular team, it wouldn't matter, but if he was next to a few, say, enhancers, or if he had, say, if, if he somehow had his damage modified up, that would be, the damage would be equal to that, not the printed value. Same, however, if his damage was somehow modified negatively, it would also, it, that's what it would be. So, yeah. Looking at his dial, we get a couple clicks of running shot, and then the rest of the dial on speed is facing teleport. On attack, we open up a couple clicks of telekinesis, and then the rest is all uh, penetrating like a blast. On 
defense, but you open up with invulnerability, which then gives way to the special power Immortal Acolyte, which grants initial deflect which grants initial deflection. Once per turn where a friendly character is healed or turned to their starting click, heal Exodus one click. Okay, alright, alright. And then on defense or damage we have a couple of weeks of leadership. Alright, not not bad. Not great, but not bad. You know, good leader. Um originally I was gonna I was gonna try to include the uh House of X by Vita, but the 150 point cost is uh, it, yeah, it makes it a little hard to work around, you know? Anyway. Next up we have ourselves a Star Jammers team, starting off with Marvel Girl. This is uh, Rachel. This is Rachel Summers uh, when she took the the mantle of Marvel Girl to honor her uh, at the time late mother. Comics man, uh, but she comes in at thirty points as the X Men team ability as well as the Excalibur Phoenix Force Star Jammers X Men and featured keywords. She has a rally ability which grants her telekinesis. As a free action, you may remove her rally die to use telekinesis as free. Okay. Looking at her dial, it's also pretty short, but hey, she's only 30 points. We get a couple of clicks of sidestep, followed by a couple of clicks of mind control. On attack, we have a couple of clicks of penetrating second blast. On defense, we open up with a couple of clicks of energy deflection, followed by a couple of clicks of super senses. And then on damage, we open up with nothing, but that gives way to a couple of clicks of exploit weakness. Okay. Next up, we've got... Hepzibah. The new one from House of, from uh, Rise and Fall. I I do like I like the sculpt, and but the only thing is, is that I actually with Hepzibah and her two most recent sculpts, they're both really good. Like I would not sculpt swap, so because like I said, they're they're both great. Anyway, Hepzibah comes in at forty points. Has the Star Jammers, X Force, X Men, Animal, and Pirate keywords. She also has the Salvage ability. So, Salvage works like this as a free action. If the character with Salvage is occupied or is adjacent to Hindry Train, roll a d6 and place it on the character's card. You have a maximum of one Salvage die on here. Okay. If Hepzibah ha has a die on this card, she modifies by plus one the listed combat value values value or values matching the number on the die. When she makes an attack after resolutions, remove the die. Uh, three or four, attack by plus, attack plus one, dam five, damage plus one, six, attack and damage. And it works the same on everyone. Though I think she's the only one who's got it on this team. Yeah. Looking at her dot, oh, we, have another, uh, we have a trait as well. Resurrection of Corsair. Once per game, when a friendly character with the Star Jammers keyword would be KO'd, instead, you may turn them to their last non-KO click, then roll a D6 and heal them with half the result. If you choose another friendly character for this effect, after resolutions, turn Hepzibah to her last click. Protected. Pulse Wave. Okay. So if someone would be KO'd by a Pulse Wave, they can still she can still utilize it. Okay. Looking at her dial, we have a few clicks of charge on speed, followed by a couple clicks of sidestep. On attack, we've got a full run of Blaze Claws Fangs, and on defense, we have a full run of Super Senses. Okay? Simple enough. Next up, we've got Raza from House of X. I, say, I love this sculpt. Like, seriously. That sculpt looks badass. Raza here comes in at uh, 45 points. He's got the Star Jammers, Pirate, Robot, and Warrior keywords. We also have a trait. Deadliest of the Swashbuckling Space Pirates, which grants him Precision Strike and Empower. When Raza uses Empower, friendly characters with the Star Jammers keyword modify damage by plus two instead. Okay. So you're going to want to have him close to the front, all anyone who's doing close, or adjacent to anyone doing close attacks. Looking at his dial, we get a, a few clicks of charge on speed, followed by a couple of clicks of flurry. On attack, we've got a few clicks of blades, claws, fangs, and sadly, that's all. On defense, we open up with the special power, pa parry, and riposte. 
super senses, but succeeds on a four through six. When Ra Raza evades a close attack after resolutions, deal damage to the attacker equal to their printed damage value. That's their printed damage value. So if if someone tries to hit him for five, especially say if they've got ex well, no, because not penetrating. If someone tries to hit him for five, and he succeeds on super sen up close, and he succeeds on super senses. Woo, yeah. Um, they're taking five damage. Well, I mean, yeah, after after any reducers, but still, they're they're taking damage. So yeah, you know, that, that can be very useful. Next up, we anyway after that pairing of the post, we get a couple clips of uh, combat reflexes. On damage, we open up with nothing, but he, then that gives way to a couple clicks of uh, probability control, followed by a couple clicks of exploit weakness. I really wish the exploit weakness overlapped with the blades, but I like that it overlaps with the flurry at least, so there's that, but yeah. Next up, we've got Havoc. This is the Fast Forces Havoc. I, the new sculpt's alright. It's just. It's honestly just nice to have a sculpt, a new Havoc sculpt, as opposed to that same one they've been using since 2013, but, uh, you know. So Havoc here comes in at 50 points. He has the X-Men team ability, as well as the Star Jammers and X-Men keywords. He also has a rally ability. Whenever Havoc makes a range attack, he may replace a die in the attack roll with his rally die. Okay, all right. Now looking at his dial, we've got a few clicks of sidestep, followed by a couple clicks of running shot. On attack, we open up with a few clicks of penetrating psychic blast, followed by a couple clicks of uh, energy explosion. Then on defense, we open up with a few a few clicks of energy of energy deflection, followed by a couple clicks of toughness. And yes, that is a twelve attack, and that he starts off with on and three damage. Next up, we've got Corsair. I do like the new sculpt better, but I like this dial, so yeah. Corsair here comes in at 60 points. Mm. He's got the Star Jammers, Pirate, and Soldier keywords, as well as improved targeting and order hindering terrain. You got a trait, Leader of the Swashbuckling Space Pirates, which grants leadership and, and probabil probability control. Once per turn, you may re-roll the attack roll of a friendly character with the Star Jammers keyword. Now, first, a few things to note with that. One, it does not say another. It says simply a friendly, meaning he can do it for himself. Two, it uh, does not specify range and line of fire. So if he even if he can't see it, the another character with a star dreamer's keyword, they can still you can still reroll an attack roll. There's once per turn. Anyway, looking at Corsair's dial, we get a few clicks of running shot, followed by a few clicks of charge. On attack, we open up with a few clicks of energy explosion, followed by a few clicks of blaze claws fangs. Defense, we open up with a few clicks of um, initial deflection, followed by a few clicks of combat reflexes. On damage, we open up with a few clicks of enhancement, followed by a few clicks of cl close combat expert. Okay, all right. Not too shabby. Now, we've also got a team-up card for Corsair. Um, team up, Jod, Hepzibah, Raza, Waldo, and Sikorsky. Now we don't have Waldo, who makes the who makes the by the Sikorsky uh, bystander. So, if one or more listed friendly characters are on the map, Corsair and listed friendly characters can use willpower. If three or more are on the map, Corsair and listed friendly characters display def defense powers gain protected at wit. Okay, and, uh, well, let's see, we've got Jod, we got Hepzibah, and we got Raza, so that's, th that's three, so yeah. Doesn't make me wish I had Waldo, but oh well. Next up, we've got Cyclops. Cyclops here comes in at 75 points, he's got the X-Men team ability as well as the Star Jammers, x vector and X-Men keywords. He also has improved targeting. May make range attacks out of adjacency, including the target adjacent opposing characters. 
And finally, we have a trait, um, Southern Rivalry, which grants him leadership. Once per turn, when a friendly character named Havoc hits, modify Cyclops' combat values by plus one this turn. Okay, all right. And I like to think, at least, that uh, Havoc will be hitting often. Kind of a when he, you know, when he attacks, he hits. Hopefully. Anyway, looking at his dial, Cyclops opens up with a few clicks of the special power. You will forget who you are for a minute. This grants him Force Blast and Sidestep. When Cyclops hits with a range attack, after resolutions, all hit targets can use Battle Fury until your next turn. Okay. This thing is way to a few clicks of uh, Running Shot. On attack, we open up with a few clicks of uh, Energy Explosion, followed by a few clicks of... Uh, Penetrate Psychic Blast. On defense, we open up a few clicks of Toughness, followed by a few clicks of Energy Deflection. And finally, on damage, we've got a few clicks at the, at the top of the dial of Ranged Combat Expert. Okay. I do wish the Ranged Combat Expert and the, uh, was on the same clicks as the uh, Penetrate Psychic Blast. And I also wish the Running Shot pen and Pensai were at the beginning instead of the back end, but hey. They're still there, and yeah, it, it it's it kind of makes it kind of makes you say, "Oh, by all means, deal them three damage. See what happens." Finally, we've got John. This is the House of X version. So John comes in at a whopping ninety points. He's got the Star Jammers, Monster, Brute, or Pirate, and Warrior keywords, as well as improved targeting, ignores and destroys blocking terrain. We got two traits. First off is Protector of the Swashbuckling Space Pirates. This grants him Defend and Enhancement. When Jod uses Enhancement, friendly characters with the Starjammer's keyword modify damage by plus two instead. Okay, alright. Then uh, the next one is Kree, my pet. My pet. When Jod starts the game, generate a Kree bystander token that gains the Starjammer's keyword. Okay. And there's the E uh, bystander there. He's got plasticity, he's got uh, poison, and he's got super senses, and he's tiny. Looking at Odd's dial, we open up with a few clicks of running shot, followed by a few clicks of charge. On attack, we start with nothing, but he gets some mid dial uh, super strength, followed by some late dial uh, blaze loss fangs. On defense, we open up with a few clicks of. Uh, Vulnerability, followed by a few clicks of Toughness. Damage, we open up with a couple clicks of uh, Range Time Expert. We get a blank click near the middle, and then the rest is Close Combat Expert. Alright, okay. Yeah, I do like that the uh, we get the overlap with uh, Running Shot and Range Combat Expert. Um, but And yeah, it, it's, it's quite nice. I, I'm liking it. So, we got one other thing on here, and that is the Power Gem which will ideally be going on Havoc. So you can be running out, running out with a 13 attack, doing 5 damage. That'd be, you know, it's just kind of a nice thing to be like, oh, 5 damage, zap, and it's penetrating. And uh, if he's adjacent to Jod, it can become 6 penetrating damage. Anyway, finally we have ourselves an X-Men team. And yes, you're not, this is, a, you're 400 point teams, but they are rather large. Low point costs. I'm not complaining, really. So, to kick off our X-Men team, we've got Dr. Moira McTaggart. Moira here comes in at uh, 20 points and has the X-Men team ability, as well as the X-Men and Scientist keywords. Uh, she has a rally ability. As a power action, you may remove, remove a rally die from her to heal an adjacent character of two clicks. Okay. Looking at her dial. On speed, we open up with a click of uh, stealth, followed by a couple clicks of size up, then back to stealth. Nothing on attack. On defense, we got an almost full run of uh, super senses. However, on the last click, we've got uh, regeneration. And she can get back to top click with it. Then on damage, on her first and last clicks, we have this, the special power, Muir Island Research Lab. As a power action, you can give an adjacent friendly character with the X-Men keyword a rally die. Okay. 
Now, it has to be an adjacent friendly character, so she can't give herself one. Next up, we've got Marvel Girl. And yes, it's the same Marvel Girl that we saw in the Star Jammers team. Coming in at 30 points, X Men team ability. Uh, Excalibur Phoenix Force, Star Jammers, X Men Future. Rally the Grand's Telekinesis, and you can remove the Rally Dive. Use Telekinesis is free. Sidestep, Mind Control, Penetrate, Psychic Blast. Uh, Additional deflections, super senses, and uh, exploit weakness. Next up, we've got Multiple Man. Now, if you watched my uh, unboxing series, you may know, or any of the any of the uh, first five videos of that, you probably noticed I pulled a few of these guys. Multiple Man comes in at forty points. He has the X Men and Underworld team abilities as well as the Hydra, Magia, Shield, X-Factor, X-Men, Detective, and Spy keywords. We get two traits. First off is Reabsorption. Multiple Man, Multiple Man isn't a standard character. If Multiple Man started the game on number 9, he has a zero point value for all effects, including scoring, protected, pulsed wave. Creating new dupes. Multiple Man takes a maximum of two damage from attacks. Whenever Multiple Man takes damage during your opponent's turn, after resolutions generate a Multiple Man on click number 9. Damage, uh, yeah, exposure damage taken. Looking at his dial, uh, we've got a. So this is the this is first we're looking at the primer, the Madrox Prime dial. We get a click of stealth on speed, on attack we open up with nothing and then we click into steel energy for the rest of the dial. On defense we have a full run of toughness. On damage we open up with a few clicks of leadership followed by a couple a couple clicks of close combat expert. The dupes on the other hand, they op they've got. Plasticity on attack on speed, incapacitate on uh, attack, toughness on defense, and empower on damage. And so yes, we are bringing some extras, some extras all set to the on the dupe dial, so that if he takes damage, well, pop out a dupe. Next up, we've got the old knucklehead himself, Wolverine. Wolverine here comes in at 45 points and has the X-Men team ability, as well as the Avengers, Jean Grey School for Higher Learning, Weapon X, and X-Men keywords. We have a Rally ability, which can, first off, grants regeneration, and when you would use regeneration, instead of uh, making the D6 roll, instead you can just remove the Rally die, to use that as a result, which is probably the best thing to do. Um, looking at his dial, we open up with a few clicks of charge, followed by a couple clicks of flurry. We get a full run of Blaze Claw's Fangs on attack, a full run of toughness on defense, and a full run of exploit weakness on damage. Honestly, that's really good, especially for 45 points. I, I have no compl I have no complaints at all with this Wolverine. Next up we've got Angel. Angel here comes in at 45 points, has the X-Men and Defenders keywords, or team abilities, I mean. We've also got the <sighs> Champions, Defenders, Horsemen, Gene Grey School for Higher Learning, X-Factor, and X-Men keywords. We've got improved movement in towards characters, and we have a rally ability. Um, you can remove, as a free action, you can remove Angel's rally die to move up to five squares. If you did, after resolutions, you may choose a standard friendly character with the X-Men keyword he moved through during that action and place that character adjacent to him. Now, some fun things about this. Because you are placing the character, not carrying the character, he can basically bring in someone to make an attack. Which can be very useful. Looking at his dial, we open up with a few clicks of charge, then we get a couple clicks of uh, sidestep. Sadly, we have nothing on attack. That is kind of the one thing again, one problem I got with him is no attack powers, but oh well. On defense, we open up with a couple clicks of toughness, and we get a couple clicks of uh, super senses, followed by a couple clicks at the end of combat reflexes. On damage, we got a couple clicks of power, and the rest is range is close combat expert. That's not bad. Not bad in the slightest. Next up, we've got Warpath. 
This Warpath has, has honestly been, yeah, he's he's great. I, I, I love him. I, I don't know if they could do a better Warpath. I mean, maybe some leadership. But, yeah, I mean, <laughs> for a catch-all version of Warpath, that that's it. They're, they're, they can't improve. There's... Just, just keep remaking this figure. This exact figure. Just keep remaking it. Maybe give it a new sculpture for a few years, you know? Anyway. Warpath comes in at 50 points, has the X-Men team ability, as well as the Hellions, Nubians, Weapon X, X-Force, X-Men, and Warrior keywords. We have a, and we have a Rally Die, or Rally Ability, which grants him Stealth. As a free action, you may remove his Rally Die to make a range attack with a 5 range using improved targeting and ignores hindering train. Okay, alright. Looking at his dial, we get a few clicks of charge, followed by some flurry, forward a blaze, forward a toughness, a few clicks of uh, exploit weakness, followed by a couple clicks at the end about wit. All right, okay. Next up, we've got long shot. Long shot here comes in at fifty points. He's got the X Men team ability as well as the. Excalibur, Exiles, Mojoverse, X Factor, X Men, and Celebrity keywords. We also have a Rally ability. When Longshot makes an attack, you may replace a die in the attack roll with his Rally die. His, also, his rolls of two fives are critical hits. But you want to be a little careful with that because, well, you know, if if you're playing against someone who's got a lot of Rally figures, well, let's just let's just maybe you shouldn't be hoping for. Dual fives. Anyway, looking at his dial, we get a few clicks of running shot followed by a couple clicks of sidestep. On attack, we've got a few clicks of uh, incapacity followed by a couple clicks of blade claws fangs. On defense, we have some energy energy shield deflection followed by super senses. Then on damage, we've got a full run of the special power. Born lucky, I guess. Probably control. When Longshot is the target of an attack, you may use it regardless of range and line of fire. Okay. So, oftentimes the uh, kind of the rule of thumb when it comes to going after someone with prob is get out of their range. You know, attack for, attack with someone who's at a longer range. Yeah, that's not going to matter with Longshot. Then there's one, two other things to keep in mind. Longshot has protected outwit... Or long, uh, his damage power is protected from both Outwit and Pulse Wave. So if someone Pulse Waves, he can, he can prob it. Yeah. That's, that's kind of nice. Alright, next up we've got Beast. Beast comes in at 50 points and has the X-Men and uh, Defenders team abilities. As well as the... Avengers, Defenders, Illuminati, Gene Grey School for Higher Learning, X-Force, X-Men, Animal, and Scientist Keywords. We also have improved movement in order to elevated terrain. We have a Rally Ability, which grants out Wits. And as a free action, you may remove his Rally Die to use out Wit, even if he's already used it this turn. Okay. Looking at his dial, we get a few clicks of Charge, followed by a few clicks of uh, Sidestep. Nothing on attack, sadly. Not even some blades, because, I mean, he does have uh, claws on his, uh, you know, clawed fingernails and toenails. On defense, we open up with a few clicks of super senses, followed by a few clicks of uh, combat reflexes. Okay. Damage, we open up with a special power. A good strategy does more than a pair of fists, which grants close combat expert. As a free action, you may remove a rally die from a friendly character. If you do, give a rally die to another friendly character. Okay, all right. That then gives way to some regular close combat expert. So he can at least hit through most of the... He, he's probably going to be able to hit at least for most of the dial. That's good. Finally, we've got... Blink. Well, I, I, they've all, honest, we've only got... Uh, at least in the, the uh, carded era, we've gotten two great sculpts for Blink. And to be fair... The blink we got in the old Rev era, for the time, had a good sculpt, and it was, it was you know the only it was kind of lackluster, but it's still kind of just like yeah that that's how, what the character looks like. So yeah, 
Anyway, Blink comes in at 60 points, has the X-Men team ability, as well as the Age of Apocalypse, Exiles, Generation X, Jean Grey School for Higher Learning, New Mutants, Utopia, and X-Men keywords. We also have a Rally ability. Uh, when she makes an attack after resolutions, you may remove her Rally die to place her or a hit character up to five squares from their current square. Okay. Then we have a trait. See ya, wouldn't want to be ya. This grants her facing teleport. When Blink uses it, she has passenger three, but only to carry friendly characters that share a keyword with her. Well, that's not going to be much of a problem. She's got quite a few keywords after all. Anyway, looking at her dial, we get a few clicks of running shot followed by a few clicks of flurry. On attack, we open up with nothing for the first half of the dial. In the back half, we've got Blaze Law's Fangs. On defense, we open up with energy deflection followed by combat reflexes. And then on damage, we open up with uh, a few clicks of leadership, and that's it. Uh, we're also running the Reality Gem. Um, no, we have real, I don't really use the Reality Gem often. Um, it's not... I mean, it's useful, just not as useful. Like all other, uh, like the other Infinity Gems, it has a cost of six of uh, ten points. Um, its effects are as follows: the character gains an extra target. Also, perplex and telekinesis. When this character hits, if the attack roll was a ten or higher after resolution, resolutions, they may generate a standard heavy object and then can use telekinesis at no cost. Can repeat if you continue to roll ten or higher. Um, Briefly, it was thought that uh, the reality gem, or that the change, the changes made to the uh, pack, would actually lead to the reality gem being not as good. Um, yeah, telekinesis. Uh, place one friendly single base character or or object within range and line of fire to another square within range and line of fire. That's where it must be within six squares in line of fire from the target's current square. Current displays this power can't use telekinesis this turn. Okay. But, um... It looks like you can still do object attacks. At, le at least via the, the reality gem. But, yeah. Anyway, that's going to do it for now. Um... As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, one more thing. Uh, this week's uh, comic book might be postponed by a few days. We'll see what happens. Um, like I said, might, might not. Next week's definitely will be. Uh, but yeah, as always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal can be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying live long and rock hard.